Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going deep into the world of AI chips. Oh, this is going to be good. It is, right. Specifically, we're diving into the fascinating story of NVIDIA and their uh, their dominance in AI computing. They are the 800-pound gorilla in the room, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And at the heart of it all is their platform, CUDA. They've built this uh, almost like a walled garden, you know, and it's been incredibly successful for them. It really has. But, uh, you know, things are getting interesting because you have these major players like Intel, AMD. Google, even Amazon. Yeah, they're all starting to challenge NVIDIA's reign. So we're going to unpack all of that, not just the what, but the why. The strategies, the potential shakeups, what it all means for the future of AI. You know, what's always struck me about NVIDIA is how they really capitalized on a fundamental shift in computing. Mm -hmm. It's not just about faster chips. It's like they tapped into a whole new dimension of processing power. Okay, so break that down for us. They basically took GPUs, which most people associate with, you know, video games and graphics. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And transformed them into these AI powerhouses. But how did they do that? Well, their secret sauce is CDA. It stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. Oh, okay. Think of it like a, like a conductor for an orchestra, but for GPUs. It orchestrates all these parallel processing capabilities. Okay. You know that analogy everyone uses, the highway analogy, where a like, CPU... It's like a single lane road. Exactly. Yeah. Processing information one car at a time. But a GPU with CED, it's like this massive multi-lane highway. Zoom. Everything's moving at once. Precisely. It can handle huge amounts of data simultaneously. But what's really clever is how NVIDIA made CEA accessible. Mm. They built it upon familiar programming languages like C++, so developers wouldn't have to learn a whole new thing. So they lowered the barrier to entry? Yeah, and then they went a step further, created this whole ecosystem of tools and libraries, making it super easy for developers to dive in and build these complex applications. So it's not just about building a better chip. It's about building this whole world around it that draws people in. It's like a, well, like we said, a walled garden, right? Exactly. And that strategy has been wildly successful. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Over 5 million developers using CUDA. Wow. That's a huge community. That's a lot of brain power invested in that one ecosystem. And speaking of investment, that brings us to NVIDIA's strategic brilliance. Yeah. They've created this environment where developers just get hooked on CUDA. Right. It's not just about raw performance. It's the whole package, the seamless experience, the libraries, the support network makes it really hard to, you know, to even consider switching. It's kind of like Apple's ecosystem. Once you're in, it's hard to imagine using anything else. Exactly. And the numbers prove it. 40,000 companies relying on CUDA. Over 300 code libraries built for it. That's a powerful network effect. Makes it tough for rivals to compete. It does. But here's where things get really interesting. Here we go. The demand for AI computing power, it's attracting some seriously big players. Intel, for example, they're jumping into the ring. They are, and they're not messing around. No, they're not. With their One API initiative, they're practically challenging the whole idea that GPUs are the only answer for AI computing. So instead of focusing solely on GPUs, Intel is pushing for a more universal approach, a platform that can work across different types of processors. Right. They want to create a world where developers aren't restricted to just NVIDIA hardware. Oh, so that's one approach. And then you have AMD, they're taking a different route. Yeah. AMD is all about open standards, like yeah. OpenCL and HIP, appealing to developers who value flexibility and the uh, the open source world. Their ROCM platform is getting some traction too, especially in scientific computing, where open source solutions are often preferred. Right. It's a very different philosophy from NVIDIA's walled garden. It's like the difference between a private club and a public park, right? Exactly. And then there's Google always doing their own thing. They've got their custom designed TPUs, tensor processing units. Specifically made for machine learning. That's right. So while Intel and AMD are trying to broaden the playing field, Google's over there creating their own specialized hardware. But here's what's interesting. They're also promoting a more platform agnostic approach through TensorFlow. Right, which is their open source machine learning framework. So they're not trying to lock anyone into their ecosystem. It seems like there's a real tension between those two approaches. Right. The desire for specialized hardware versus the need for flexibility and openness. Absolutely. And it's a tension that's going to shape the future of AI computing. And then there's this whole other layer of competition coming from smaller companies who are seeking alternatives to NVIDIA. 
especially as the cost of their top tier chips keeps rising. Oh yeah, the cost is a major factor. Like Ninja Tech AI, they decided to go with Amazon's Tranium chip because Nvidia's H100s were just too expensive and hard to get. And it paid off for them. They were able to launch a successful AI agent powered by Tranium. That's a big win for Amazon, showing that there's real demand for alternatives, especially when Nvidia's prices are a barrier. Absolutely, and Amazon's not just selling those chips, they're using them to power their own cloud services building a whole suite of AI chips like Tranium and Inferentia to reduce their reliance on NVIDIA and cut costs. So it feels like NVIDIA is being squeezed from all sides. They are. And that brings us to the question of how NVIDIA is responding to all of this. They've got Jensen Huang, their CEO, who's known for his bold vision. Oh, yeah. He's a real visionary. His strategy, providing the lowest total cost of ownership. Which is more than just having the cheapest chips, right? Exactly. It's about the overall value proposition, performance, efficiency, the long-term benefits of being part of their ecosystem. They're not just focused on specs. They're selling the whole package, the ease of development, the support, the potential cost savings down the road. And they're backing it up with constant innovation. Their latest H100 GPU, it's a big leap forward in performance. And to stay ahead of the competition, they've even accelerated their chip development cycle from releasing new GPUs every two years to every year. They're definitely feeling the heat. But they're also leveraging the strength of their ecosystem, that walled garden we talked about. Betting that the convenience and familiarity of CUA will keep customers coming back. You know, it's almost like they're saying, sure, you can try those other options, but you'll have to start from scratch. Is it worth the hassle? Right. Rebuilding your entire AI infrastructure is a daunting task. And NVIDIA is not just sitting on their laurels. They're expanding their offerings, mm -hmm. platforms like Nemo, which helps streamline AI model development and deployment. They're becoming a one-stop shop for all things AI. Exactly. So it looks like this battle for AI chip supremacy is just heating up. Oh, it definitely is. And that raises some really interesting questions about the future of this whole field. Like, will there be room for multiple winners or will one company ultimately dominate? What about the impact of these open standards and these emerging technologies? Mm -hmm. Things are getting really interesting. They are. And that's what we're going to dive into next. So where do we go from here? Will this huge demand for AI computing power mean there's room for lots of winners? Or will we end up with just one company ruling the roost, kind of like NVIDIA is now? Yeah, that's the big question. Yeah. And like we were talking about, it's not just about who has the fastest chip. It's that whole ecosystem, right? The software, the tools, the developer. Exactly. So can those open standards that AMD's pushing, can those really take off and, you know, shake things up? Or is NVIDIA's walled garden just too convenient, too powerful? What would it even take for a company to actually break free mm -hmm. from NVIDIA's walled garden? Would they have to, like, completely rebuild everything from scratch? Honestly, in a lot of cases, probably yes. Think about a company that's built their whole AI system using CUA, using NVIDIA's GPUs, their software. They're all in. Totally all in. Switching to something else, even if it uses open standards, it could mean rewriting tons of code, retraining their AI models, maybe even buying new hardware. That's a huge undertaking. Oh, yeah. It's a massive project. And that's what NVIDIA is counting on, that inertia. So even if there are cheaper options, more flexible options out there, the cost of switching is just too high. So companies stick with what they know. Exactly. But there are some things that could shift the balance. Like, what if those open source platforms like ROCM, AMD's version of CEDA, what if they could match NVIDIA's performance? And what if those tools and libraries around them got good enough to, you know, be just as easy to use? Right. Then things would get really interesting. Remember Ninja Tech AI, the company that went with Amazon's Tranium chip? Yeah. They did it because NVIDIA's prices were just too much. But they still had to do a lot of work to get their AI model running on a totally different system. It wasn't just plug and play. Not at all, but they did it. It shows you can break away from NVIDIA, but it takes a lot of time, resources, and you got to know what you're doing. And it's not just smaller companies like Ninja Tech who are looking for other options. You're talking about the big guys like Amazon? Yeah, Amazon's building their own AI chips now, like Tranium and Inferentia to use in their cloud services. To get away from depending on NVIDIA. Exactly. And that's a big deal because it shows that even the giants want more control over their AI. They don't want to be stuck with just one vendor. So it's a battle on multiple fronts, yeah. right? You've got the chip performance war, the ecosystem war, and this fight for control. And then on top of all that, we've got these wildcard technologies like quantum computing. Still early days, but... But if quantum computers become a real thing for AI, 
it could totally change the game. We're talking a whole new level of computing power. Imagine being able to solve problems that are impossible for our current computers. Drug discovery, materials, science, finance, everything could change. It's mind-blowing. But let's come back to the present for a sec. We've been focusing on the challenges to NVIDIA, but they're not just sitting back and watching, are they? Not a chance. Not. NVIDIA is a tough competitor, and they're not giving up their lead easily. They're always innovating, pushing the limits, making their ecosystem even better. And they've got Jensen Huang, their CEO, because a visionary. He's already said that they're going to deal with those cost concerns that are pushing companies to look elsewhere. So they're listening. Yeah, and they're responding. Huang said their next generation of AI chips will be more affordable. So they're not ignoring the competition. Not at all. Plus, they're pouring money into research and development, looking for new ways to stay ahead. So it sounds like NVIDIA is fighting on all fronts. Innovation, affordability, and keeping their ecosystem strong. Exactly. They're not just defending their position. They're trying to shape the future. So for companies trying to figure out this whole AI chip landscape, what should they be thinking about? First things first, you got to know what you need AI for. What are you trying to do with it? What kind of performance are you looking for? What's your budget? Right. It's not a one-size-fits-all thing. Nope. The best choice depends on your specific situation. But there's also a bigger question to think about. Or philosophical. Yeah. What kind of AI world do you want to be a part of? Do you like the convenience of NVIDIA's walled garden? Or do you want the freedom of open standards? Even if it means more work up front. Exactly. It's a choice every company has to make. And those choices will determine what the future of AI looks like. Absolutely. Okay, so we've spent this whole deep dive talking about this, this battle royale happening in the world of AI chips. But I want to bring it back down to earth a little bit. What does all this mean for the average person, someone who's not you know, writing code or running a tech company, but is still super interested in what AI can do? That's a great question, and it's something we should all be thinking about because the truth is the decisions being made right now by these companies we've been discussing, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, all of them, those decisions are going to affect all of us, whether we realize it or not. It's like we're standing at the very beginning of this, this new technological era, and the rules are still being written, and we get to watch it happen. It really is an exciting time, but it's important to remember that this isn't just about you know, who's got the fastest chip or the fanciest software. It's about making sure AI is accessible, it's affordable, and ultimately that it's used to make things better for everyone. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not just a tech story. It's a human story, right? Exactly. It's about how we use this incredible power of AI to solve problems, to create opportunities, to, to improve lives. And that's why it's so important for all of us, even if we're not tech experts, to stay informed, to engage in this conversation, because the choices we make today are going to shape the future of AI. So for our listener who's maybe feeling a little overwhelmed by all of this, what's the one thing you want them to take away from this deep dive? I'd say don't be afraid to dive in. Get curious, you know. There are so many resources out there, so many ways to learn about AI, even just on a basic level. The more you understand about how it works, the better prepared you'll be for the future. And don't forget, this is a field that's constantly evolving. What's cutting edge today could be old news tomorrow. So stay curious, stay informed. And who knows, maybe you'll even find yourself inspired to contribute to this whole AI revolution in your own way. Absolutely. Remember, the future of AI isn't set in stone. It's being created right now, and we all have a role to play in shaping it. Well said. So to everyone listening, keep exploring, keep asking questions. And until next time, keep diving deep.